We have an example problem here. The following figure shows an electric field of 100 newtons per coulomb pointing to the right. Calculate the electric flux through the shaded surface. So we have a wedge-shaped surface. We're assuming this electric field continues all the way across the screen, just for the sake of making the picture pretty. It only shows on that left side. So these electric field lines, we know some of them will come in on the left side, some of them are going to, well, they're going to continue and come up out on the right side. On this right side, though, this electric field is not coming out perpendicular to the surface. I can write this electric field as 100 newtons per coulomb I hat. Comes in on the left, comes out on the right. Now electric flux, we can write as the dot product. This is a uniform electric field. It has a value of 100. It doesn't have a variable of X or Y or Z in it to suggest that it's changing depending upon position. So the dot product we can either write both vectors in terms of their x and y and z components and then do the dot product, or we can take the magnitude of the two vectors and multiply that by the cosine of the angle between them. So we already know the electric field is horizontal. The Area vector, though, remember, is always normal to the surface. It makes a 90 degree angle with the surface. So if I could look at this wedge exactly from the side, so I only saw the triangular side, there's our 20 degrees. That's a little, let me try that again. Still not that great, but let's go with it. Okay, so the electric field we already know is in the x direction. Normal to the surface, I'm going to draw my normal right here. That's my area vector. So when we want to use Ea cosine theta, Theta must be the angle between the area vector and the electric field. Okay. We know the horizontal and the incline of the wedge is 20 degrees, so that would put 20 degrees down here between the electric field, which is horizontal, and that surface of the wedge. So the angle we want is actually 70 degrees. The area vector makes a 90 degree angle with the surface. That's what we mean by the normal vector. And so if this angle down here is 20, then the angle we want is 70. Because this angle in the dot product equation, when we write it this way, it absolutely must be the angle between the two vectors that we're dotting together. Since I know this angle, I'm going to go ahead and solve this problem this way, Ea cosine theta, as opposed to trying to write my area vector in terms of x and y components, which I totally could, but I don't need to because I know the angle. So our electric field is 100 newtons per coulomb. The area we're shown that the two sides are two meters, so those would be two squared. And then cosine of 70 degrees gives us these components that lie along the same line. So I'm getting 136.8. We have one sig fig. Oh, that bothers me. I'm going to write it as 2. So technically, in one sig fig, it would be the 100. I have a really hard time with one sig fig. That's a personal problem. 
So if we're writing it in two sig figs, 140, one sig fig, 100. But again, also units, just watch your units. Newtons per coulomb from the electric field, meters squared from the area. So our units for the electric flux, newtons, meters squared over coulombs. 